Ah, so here we are a couple of days later and it's another new video about Simplify 3D version 4. Uh, in this one we're going to talk a little bit about some of the new features in version 4 which assist with uh, sequential printing and also a sort of, you know, just improve the situation in general on uh, multi-process prints. So let's have a look. As mentioned in previous videos, we're using the Simplify 3D website and under the software and under what's new in version four. Um, so we have covered these first three new features. So we're gonna discuss these next two here in this video. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna do them in the opposite order just because, well, that's the way I wanna do it. <laughs> And uh, the, so the first one we're going to discuss is improved sequential printing. And the important part of this is the last sentence where it says this mode and now also supports multiple processes for the same model, which we'll have a look at. And we're also going to have a look at the new feature of the drag and drop reordering in the process list. So we shall do that at the end of this video. First up, in case you don't know what sequential printing is, and if you don't know what sequential printing is, you probably won't be interested in either this video or the new updates to sequential printing functionality in version four of Simplify 3D. However, if you do occasionally need to use or desire to use sequential printing, then uh, it has greatly been improved in terms of the user experience, the way that it deals with sequential printing in version four. Anyway, we're in version three right now because, well, that's the best way to show what's changed in version four. Um, so as you can see, I've got two objects on the build table and uh, they are spaced a uh, decent enough distance apart that they can be printed individually, i.e printing all of the disk first and then all of the cube or the other way around without the, um, well, any of the 3D printer hitting the previous printed part. And that is essentially, that is essentially what sequential printing is. It is printing entirely one part before starting on the other part. So I've got a simple example here of uh, two parts uh, with a process for each. Um, and if you want to see slightly how you do that, although this video is not really for that, but anyway, let's have a look. So for the cube object, uh, basically you go down and you select models and you say which one of the parts you want this process to uh, be associated with. So I've selected just the cube. And for the disc, or cylinder if you like, um, it is just the disk that is selected. And it's as simple as that uh, to assign different processes to different parts. And then what happens when you go to prepare the print, you need to select all as you want to print both at the same time, and you want to select sequential printing. The maximum height clearance will be used to calculate how much of an object it can print before being forced to move to the other one due to clearance issues. So if you're printing them close together, this will basically be how much clearance you uh, can possibly have um, on the height of one uh, with your hot end, probably somewhere around the hot end or the uh, Y carriage, Z carriage, whichever way you look at it, uh, before it hits the other one. So it will do as many layers as it can and then move over to the other one. But if I set this to, well, it doesn't really matter, but if I set it to 180 millimeters, it means that it can print 180 millimeters up before having to move over to the other one. And uh, seeing as these are only 20 mil high, it means the entire thing. So we click on OK. And uh, if we go to the beginning, you can see that it's going to print the uh, cube first in its entirety and then move over to the cylinder. You may be wondering why you'd want to do this. Well, you would normally, and if we have a look at that very quickly, prepare to print, we'll do them all at the same time and we'll leave it as layer by layer. And you can see all of these movements which will happen over sort of open space, moving between each one, which will probably end up with some kind of artifacts where it is moving between each one. So it gets rid of a great deal number of movements, which would improve the quality of the print, but also should increase the speed because it's not having to move between each one on every layer. So that's all good and well. And as you can see, it works perfectly in version three. 
Now what happens in the scenario where you need to split the process for one or more of these objects? Let's say for example that for the disk you can only, well you need for some reason to use a different process for the first half and a different process for the second half. So I will load in a factory file which I have prepared earlier to demonstrate this. Okay, so I've loaded the factory file in that I prepared earlier, and as you can see, we now have one process that does the entire cube. We have another process that does the first 10 mil of the cylinder, and a separate process with different infill for the uh, upper half of the cylinder. Uh, so yeah, we've got a split process on the cylinder. So if we go to prepare print, we'll select them all, and uh, we shall select uh, sequential printing, put in a massive clearance again, and uh, if we go to the beginning, you can see that it does the cube first as we would want, it then does the first half of the cylinder as we want, and then it switches to the second process. So all is good. Uh, why? What's the change in version 4 if we could already do it in version 3? Well, let's load in another little factory file I've prepared earlier. And here it is. The difference being is that the process is now split on the cube. It has nothing to do with the shape of the part. It is because the cube prints before the cylinder or disk. So now if we go to prepare print, select all, do sequential printing and give it a big clearance and go to the beginning run through the print and as you can see it's starting off it's doing the first process of the cube and then it hops over to the cylinder which it will then complete before hopping back and finishing off the cube. While this may not be disastrous because you know it's still greatly reducing the number of travel moves but uh, anyway the point being is that you wanted it all entirely printed in one and uh, it hasn't done that it's split it into two so uh, although i haven't tried out every permutation it seems that um, you can have multiple processes on the last part to be printed in version three but if you require any other permutation of split processes in sequential printing in version three then you are out of luck so here we are as if by magic in version 4 now and uh, I have exactly the same factory file open where we want to print the cube first and we've got two processes for the lower half and the upper half with a different infill and then after that print the entire disk with its own process. So the first thing that I've noticed in version 4 that is actually a, a, probably the best improvement really is that it remembers which one of these you've selected at the bottom and it also remembers the height. In version 3 every time you hit the prepare to print you need to select the right one and put the height back in. Yeah, so that's an improvement. So if we select all and uh, click OK we can go to the beginning of the print, run through it and you will see that it now completes the cube, both processes in the cube first before doing the cylinder. So there it is, that is the improvement. And of course you can add as many, you, you know, you could split the process on the disc into two or add further parts in. And uh, so that is the uh, advertised improvement to sequential printing. So the other feature or new feature in version four that we're covering today is the ability to literally drag and drop. You can click on one of these and drag it into a different location to change the order of the print. Uh, so if you wanted the cube printed first, you could drag it to the top. And uh, you, well, you could sort of do this. Well, no, you couldn't do this in version 3. What you would have to do in version 3, and let's have a look to see what happens here. If we select all, go in, we can go to the beginning of the print, and we can see that it's going to print this 80 millimeter high uh, <laughs> rectangle. That's the word. <laughs> first, which means that when it moves on to that one, uh, it isn't going to work because your um, y-axis and hot end and everything else is going to smack into this print that's already there. So uh, yeah, we need to go back and think again. What you would have had to have done in version 3 is delete all these, put them in in the specific order, and then it would probably work. 
To save you a whole bunch of time now in version 4, you can literally just grab the process for the tool cube, move it to the end, prepare to print, select all, go to the beginning, and let's see what it does. So it's now going to print this disk first, which is fine, it's all by itself. It will then print the uh, 20 millimeter cube at the front, which is fine, we should have clearance on the 3D printer for that. It will then move to the rear. Now this could potentially be an issue with the z-axis on here. It all depends on the sort of shape, size, configuration of your printer. Anyway, the point being is that we have managed to rearrange that purely by clicking and dragging and dropping the processes around in here. So the long and the short of it is that if you sort of fairly regularly need to do sequential printing or, you know, complicated multi-process processes, <laughs> factories, whatever, um, then uh, this version 4 is going to save you a great deal of time and aggravation. So that's good. Uh, the next video I'm going to do is on the two features that are, I'm kind of most excited about if 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 I can truly get excited about it. <laughs> I'm certainly most interested in because I think that on a day to day, I more or less yeah, every print that I do will benefit from this. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite excited to have a look at that. And uh, we'll do that. Well, probably in the next couple of days.